uh, second part of our program on Friday mornings involves a highly qualified retired physician who is the founder and president of an organization called Health Watch USA. And I caught his uh, act on TV the other night, and uh, I just want to let you know, man, uh, i, I got to have a little cut of that uh, deal that you're getting there at uh, the TV station, okay? Well, that, that sounds good to me, Jack. I, I don't know. I, I look pretty old. I no. think I'll be swept away by uh, s- someone younger and more handsome. No, you look great. You did a great job. You always do. <clears throat> I, enjoyed, I enjoyed the piece that they ran on you. We got so much to talk about, and, and you're really good at keeping me up to date as to what's going on. So let, just kick us off there and tell us uh, what's the latest on COVID-19. Well, there is so much happening. A number of states are starting to spike. And our neighbor to the south, because everybody in Kentucky likes to see how Tennessee's doing, their cases are going out the roof and they are filling the hospitals. Wednesday, it was 1,700 cases a day. Yesterday, 1,575. And that compares to our case count, which has been well below 300. So needless to say, we're doing quite well under Governor Bashir. Very thankful for his, his guidance. You're proud of the governor. I am too. I think he's really done a great job. Only other thing I think we need to consider doing is preemptively closing down some of our, what I would think are super spreader businesses such as bars. I think we need to be a little proactive here. This virus is starting to really peak everywhere and people are going to be spreading it like you can't believe over the 4th of July weekend. Needless to say, Jack, it is very, uh, very concerning, the 4th of July. I mean, they're having this fireworks event out in South Dakota, which uh, makes absolutely no sense. I haven't seen anything like this since Jonestown, I'll be honest with you. You just can't convince people. We've seen what went on in the 1918 epidemic. We saw what went on in China with this epidemic, what went on in Europe and Italy, what went on in the Northeast, what went on currently still going on in Texas and Arizona and Florida. And yet I think people are going to go out and misbehave over the 4th of July holiday. We really do need to celebrate within our family unit and have a good time, but do it safely and socially distance. And whenever you can, wear a mask if you're going to be fairly close to someone. You need to wear a mask, especially on indoor activities. All right, now tell me about the confusion uh, down with Tennessee and, and what's going on there. Well, Tennessee is closing down again. The governor has extended their orders. It looks like it's closing down by city or region as far as restrictions on restaurants and bars. Nashville has imposed some new restrictions and they've gone back to phase two. But just this morning, I'll be honest with you, I read one news report that was saying that the restaurants were confused on what they should be doing. So it looks like Tennessee's very concerned. And and this spike they've had has just been over two to three days. And it's just shot up, well up to 1,500 cases, which is a tremendous amount of cases. And that's cases per day. It's a tremendous amount to have in a state which uh, is relatively small, like Kentucky. Wow. It's just, it's almost overwhelming. Now, this is still phase one, too. This, I mean, this is, this isn't the, the f- first round. It's not the second round. It's still the first round, right? Right. We're still in the first wave. We've nowhere reached any sort of herd immunity, if, if you, that can even be reached, anywhere in the country, including New York City. Everybody is still susceptible for a second wave. We haven't flattened our first wave. And we haven't, of course, even got it down to very low levels where you could do contact tracing reliably. If you look at Spain, their their cases are very, very small. Their deaths on some days have been non-existent and and they were a huge hotspot. And they did this with social distancing, wearing masks, and closing down the economy for a while. In the United States, we've done all this piecemeal People are still not wearing masks to the degree that it's going to prevent spread. I don't think they believe in asymptomatic spread or it's not important to them. The more we find out about this virus, the more we realize that this is a very dangerous virus and everybody takes a risk, even the young. 
because it's not just dying, you can have long-term sequela. The thing that I find interesting is, as we've been talking about long-term sequela from this virus or lasting effects, in other words, you may survive but not fully recover for a long period of time. And we've also been talking about two strains of the virus for several weeks now, if not months. And yet all of a sudden, this is you know new news on TV this week. So I think we've been ahead of the uh, head of the ball here. We're doing quite well. The uh, head of the ball here. We're doing quite well. Let's take, and, a, let's take a call real quick. Mike, good morning. Hey, I think uh, your current caller is uh, spreading a little bit of rumors and making false comparisons and assumptions. Okay, tell us. Uh, tell us for one, you can't compare a country like Spain and a country like the United States population is far bigger. We, we live farther. We're much more uh, dispersed over a larger area. And um, this virus, I, I was a medic in the Army for eight years. I worked in an immunization clinic. I gave immunizations all day, every day. So I understand how pathology works. And with a new virus like this, this a virus is going to be with humanity from now until the end of days. There is, you, we cannot go inside or shut down for a period of time and make the virus go away. That's not how it works. It's going, we're going to have to reach herd immunity, and every single person on the planet is going to come in contact and get this virus, and then their immune system is either going to have to uh, defeat the virus or they're going to succumb to it. There's never been a, uh, a um, vaccine ever developed for any coronavirus. So, that we, you know, there's no vaccine for the common cold. Okay, and yes, the number of cases are going up. That's all anyone wants to talk about is the number of cases. But this virus is just not that deadly. If even in the <laughs> even in the so-called uh, um, in the in the uh, people that you know, 65 years and older, the death rate is just not. A, it's not even as high as the flu. In other words, if you get the flu, if you're 65 and older and you get the flu you're more likely to die of the flu than you are from this virus. And, you know, I really think that about 10 times yeah, as many yeah. people have this virus. All right. Yeah. About 10 times as many people have this. One of the things we've got is a tremendous amount of disinformation being spread. Some of this can even be traced back to Russian and Chinese playbook type of bots that are being on the Internet. No. If you say we're not going to get immune from a vaccine, then I'm sorry, your own immunity is not going to last either. And that's one of the concerns. Vaccines give a greater immunity than what you get from an infection. That's the goal of the vaccine. They put adjuvants in there. And the caller is right that we're different than Spain. Spain had a unified national policy. We're not. We're chicken littles going every different direction in the country. And when un one area gets cl cleaned up, they get contaminated from another area. This virus is not the flu. It affects every organ of the body. It has a higher death rate in the elderly, much higher than the flu. And even the younger people are getting lasting disability. If you get in the ICU and get out of the ICU, you're very likely, more likely than not, they have problems with kidneys, possibly heart, problems with lungs. You have blood clotting problems. This is an extremely deadly virus. And we really need to move past of we don't need to do anything. We need to figure out what we need to do. And Deb wants to know uh, about people with certain blood types. And then she has A with a question mark, having more complications from the virus. Uh, you know what I think about that? Well, yes, there is some evidence that your blood type may make you more susceptible or less susceptible. And so that does mean possibly there's a genetic predisposition to getting either a severe disease or maybe getting a milder disease. All right. Uh, another text that asks, how does a face mask compare to a face shield for a trip to the grocery? Well, ideally, you should have both. A face mask protects you from inhaling some particles a face shield will be more apt to protect your eyes. There's some spread that can happen through your eyes, but it's not nearly as much as breathing in. 
but you need to remember a mask will not provide you the protection that you need to not socially distance. It's not complete, it just makes you safer. However, it's really good at preventing the virus if you're an unknown asymptomatic carrier, preventing the mask wearer from spreading the virus to others. You mentioned that this obviously is the 4th of July weekend coming up, Independence Day weekend, and people are gonna be doing uh, things a lot of times with families. What about this epidemic with uh, family groups? Well, if it's within your core family group, that should be okay. In other words, people that you come into contact commonly with. If it's with your extended family, then it's best to keep six feet away. You've got to be very, very careful with this. We don't want to see a repeat of Memorial Day. And with the state spiking, it's really not the best time to be having these types of affairs because what happens during the 4th of July People from out of state, from a lot of these hot spots, may come into your state, Kentucky, to visit, especially because some of them may want to get out of their state when they see what's happening around them. Uh, we understand, too, and it's, it hits home with me because my mom is in an area nursing home, and that is that the nursing homes will be allowed to open with restrictions uh, on the 15th of July. And as much as I want to see my mom, I, that scares me. Well, it concerns me too. Of course, this is a tough one. These are elderly individuals. They haven't seen their grandkids. Their whole life is really these visitations. So what do you do? For me, I would like to see our strategy centered more around family cohorts or family groups where we do pool testing. In other words, test everybody in the family, one, one test, pool all their specimens. If it's negative, they're clear, and then a member could visit. And the same strategy might be able to be incorporated into opening of schools. So we need to do this, we need to do this safely. And as I said before, this is a very, very serious epidemic. People need to be very careful on information they're getting on social media and get the information from a news agency that you trust. And that I think is extremely important. I can tell you on our accounts, we have been attacked a number of times by uh, fake accounts on Facebook. It's very frustrating. They spread misinformation. You go there and they have one post, no friends, and yet they're, they're quoting these fallacious uh, articles and distorting the, the truth. Because we just need to hang in there. Believe me, the good news is Pfizer has a vaccine which looks promising. So I've looked at the uh, initial results. It causes fever. It is producing neutralizing antibodies. And hopefully this will be found to be efficacious through phase three trials. It may be available in the next couple of months. So the, the idea that the vaccine won't work, but your immunity will is crazy. The, the idea here is you don't get the infection, you get the vaccine, the vaccine works, and we become immune. And then possibly if enough people get the vaccine, we can achieve herd immunity. So that's the good news. I hope selling the vaccine is gonna be easier than selling the face mask, don't you? Well, it's easier than being on a ventilator. Yeah. Hey, have a great weekend. Happy 4th. Thanks for being with us. And I'll be uh, off next week, but you'll be talking to Scott next week. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff.